So I'm going to I'm going to shift gears to one more thing, which is talking about uh, the display side of the design. So you know, pixel video, just you know, displaying to a display, displaying to a display that's not connected to the GPU. This is very important. I mean, that's you know, part of this multi projectors is thinking about not just the guts of rendering, but thinking about the technologies around us, the displays around us. And Pascal has some other investments in this area that, 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 are, that are cool and, and, and important to understand. Um, the first one is, is related to 4K displays. So, so 4K is you know, pretty much pervasive now, right? There's, there's you know, 4K TVs, 4K monitors, 4K streaming is coming up. Um, but uh, until now, uh, there's, you, you can't get 4K streaming on the, on the PC. And the reason for that is you have to have, a, have to have a lot of technologies that come together in order to pull that off. And Microsoft has a new uh, standard called PlayReady 3.0, which is their standard <laughs> for defining if the GPU has all the right properties for taking care of the content that comes from the developers and having the right you know, backend capabilities in terms of display and decode capabilities to be ready to take uh, 4K content. And you know, as, as what Microsoft says here is, it, is in, NVIDIA is, 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 play ready, is going to be PlayReady 3.0 certified, meaning that we are ready um, to, we have this capability that enables us to take 4K content. Um, and, and Netflix, uh, uh, which, which we're working closely with, um, this will enable them to do that. Now, their, you know, their time from when they do that is going to be up to them, um, but, uh, but, but we, we are now uh, the first company that I know of that, that, has, that has met the bar that, that Netflix and other companies like that are looking for. Uh, to be able to stream 4K. So, you know, I love gaming and gaming is great, um, but if you're a gamer that's you know, like, like in a dorm room and you've got, you know, you've got your PC and that, that's, that's your computer, you don't have a PC and a separate TV set, you, know, you want to be able to game but also enjoy media, other things like that, right? Um, and this, this, this is the, the path to enable people to, to do that. So, yeah. Is the specification uh, that purely from performance or for particular features uh, as part of the um, so the, the specification has a, is, is not a performance specification, or, or that's only part of it. It's you have to have many features in the design. You have to have features related to, to you know taking care of the content that comes into the chip. You have to have features related to being able to decode that content, like with HPC, um, for example, and then features, of course, in the display side as well. So all those together. Okay. So Mac 12, second generation Mac 12 stuff. It had decoding. It had HTC. P2.2. So what is it that Pascal actually adds to be compliant with PlayReady 3.0 that Maxwell lacked? Yeah, so, th so there, I think there's, there's at least two things. Um, so one thing is, uh, as I mentioned, some of the security features related to this, right? This technology, right? So that, 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 that Pascal adds. Um, the second thing is that uh, for, for, for many of these 4K content folks, um, they actually uh, stream the data in 10-bit. Uh, HBC 10 bit, and if you're streaming HBC 10 bit, then uh, you know, then, then this is, that, that's a that's a new capability that we're bringing in for for, for Maxwell. So, yeah, sorry. Okay, yeah. Maybe you're getting to this yeah. on a on a, on, the, on the next slide. Yeah. But do you do all the things that are needed for the new Ultra HD Premium? Uh, standard that the TV manufacturers use, like BD 2020 color representation and that. So, so I, I, I don't know, so maybe we can make a note of, of your question and then we can have someone that, that, can, that can get back to you on that. Is that... I'm sorry? What about 5 point sound on that streaming? 5 point sound? 5 point 1 sound? 5 point 1 sound. I, I, don't know the, I don't know the audio question either, I guess. So, uh, so, so yeah, so if we could just make a note of, of your question, we can, we can, we can follow up on that. Okay. Why don't I uh, keep going here? Actually, any, any questions on 4K? Okay. Okay. So, so HDR, and if we, we have some cool HDR displays in the back here. So H HDR is another area where, where we made some significant investments. Um, HDR is not is not a, hopefully not an unfamiliar thing to you guys at this point. You know, it's, it's been a, a big push, especially by the display industry, the last couple of years to get to HDR. You know, we've we've been limited by you know this this uh, yellow triangle in the middle is sort of the the classical gamut that was the gamut of, of, of shitty color televisions, you know, with CRTs when those were first invented before, you know, before any of us were born probably or something like that, right? Um, is that the right way to put it? I don't know. Maybe not. Okay. A little tone it down a little? Okay. A little tone it down. Okay. All right. 
Um, so, you know, but that's the reality is that's where the whole industry has been saddled since then because it's a standard and changing standards is hard. And even though like nobody has a CRT on their desk anymore, they have these really great, you know, uh, uh, you know LCD TVs. Uh, we're still, we still are stuck in that in that old gamut, and we're still stuck in the brightness definition of this old, you know, beam scanning whatever thing, right? So, so HDR is finally moving the industry forward into actually taking advantage of the technology that we're now that's now available, right? So, you know, expanding the visible spectrum out to be much more a much better fit to that overall spectrum that the eye can see, uh, taking advantage of the fact that these LED displays, you know, can drive it to much better brightness uh, than before. Um, you know, that that's that's valuable. Uh, one reason it's valuable is because it gives you more saturated colors. So one of the one of the problems you have with sort of a low brightness display is like you want to show somebody fire, right? There's fire burning here, right? Well, if you make the fire be the red color that fire is, it's going to be kind of dim because you're only using a third of the brightness of the display. So if you really want to give them the sense that the fire is bright, you got to desaturate it. You got to turn off the blue and the green just to get that overall brightness to be up, right? The value of these of these higher you know 1,000 nit is a definition of brightness displays is you don't have to do that anymore. You're not, you can keep, keep more of the real color uh, definition while still getting the right level of brightness um, in the design. And the contrast ratio is you know, related to the brightness gives you that sense of you know deep darks and very bright whites, and the, you know, have to have a really good color range in order, in order to do that. So that's 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 what HDR is about. Um, Pascal makes a couple of, uh, of changes to help with, with HDR. Um, so one, as I, as I mentioned already, is that we've, we, we, have, we have a new HVC decoder in this generation. So in Pascal, the HV, so the previous generation of HVC decoder was 8-bit was decode. 8-bit is fine for a classical display. Um, but for HDR, 8-bit uh, is, is not enough. And so we actually have both 10-bit and even 12-bit um, support for HVC encoders. You can actually have uh, 12 bits of color information per pixel, and that's needed to span this, this super wide range without losing without losing precision in the design. You don't want you don't want to have banding in, in, in the in the display. This this super awesome display that you just paid money for. Um, we also enhanced our HVC encoder, so now you you can actually record in in, in HDR also, um, not not just read back. Uh, yeah. <coughs> Just a curiosity, yeah. is the display that we're looking at these things on an HDR display? Uh, this is not an HDR display. I actually asked Fish, I was like, man, Fish, we need an HDR display. The Fish said we paid like $100,000 for this. <laughs> HDR-ish. HDR-ish, yeah. And that, it yeah. doesn't support the wide gamut, but it do, does support um, right. very high uh, brightness, luminance. Yes. Um, in fact, I think it pulled, it's like 1,500 nits, actually, they probably, I think it's 1,500 nits at full brightness, which, um, I don't know if they want to play around with it, just just to give everyone a little flavor for it. Maybe they could just like, you know. Well, I mean, let's not do that. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. it could like you know like yeah. HDR like if you're tuning content for HDR, you like turn it up till it hurts your eyes, and you click it down one notch, and then yeah. it's like oh, PowerPoint doesn't hurt support eyes. HDR yet, so this is just not HDR. Yeah, I mean it's not an it's just it's it's you know some brightness and color range. There's kind of two <coughs> important values there. Yeah, sorry, what was your question? Uh, which color gowns are we supporting? I don't know that. Um, so I don't know, maybe we just take a note of that one too. And we, we can try to make sure some of this detail is in the other viewers' guidelines. We support BB2020. BB2020, okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, is HDR output feature paired with uh, just a 4K resolution? Or uh, can you do HDR output with uh, for HD resolution? Um, yeah, I don't, I don't see any reason why we wouldn't be able to do that. Um, Supporting HDR is, is not necessarily tied into to 4K. So, just on, on that, you know, I did also have a note here. So, on the HDI interface side, um, so we, we've gone from DisplayPort 1.2 to DisplayPort 1.4. So, that adds this new HBR3 higher bandwidth uh, signaling. So, you can do higher resolution and also more, pixel, more, more bits per pixel for HDR. Um, and that also adds uh, support for a st their standard for sending some of the metadata over so that you can tell the display on the other end you know, what to do with the pixels when you've got them. So, so that that's that's what we've done in the hardware now, um, you know, and of course, you know, the, and you guys should check out the demo in the back here. So the good news is that, particularly on the television side, it, it's not this is not just a future thing. This is actually a now thing, right? So televisions are here. HDR televisions, uh, we expect about four million units this year are going to ship with with HDR support in them. Um, but there's there's a challenge there, which is that, you know, if your PC isn't your living room, 
you know, you have to move your PC to the living room now in order to, in order to hook it up with this awesome new television you just bought. Um, but we have a we have a solution for that. So um, not only does uh, GTX 1080 have a 10-bit HVC encoder, um, our Shield device also has an HVC 10-bit decoder. So if you if you have an HDR TV or get an HDR TV, you can now with H, with GameStream HDR in your living room take full advantage of that awesome capability. Right? We can basically on your Game stream enabled PC wherever it is uh, in your house. You can go, you know, fire up that HDR game, you know, through GameBit. It'll ship it over to the Shield device. Shield device will decode it, and then you've got that that awesome experience um, on your TV with no ha with no requirement to have sort of the, you know the a 50 foot cable uh, from your TV to wherever your, wherever your PC is. So this is coming this summer. We'll have we'll have a new ver a new a new game stream release that will enable HDR support with game stream for the first time. So with 1080 plus shield, you've got a full solution for, for HDR uh, TV set. I'm sure you guys are talking to monitor vendors a lot. So what is your view on HDR and PC monitors? When is it coming? What are the developments? So, are there any so, scalar yeah. chips that do it? So my understanding is, is, is early next year, is that? Is that about right? We, so as fast as we can make it happen. Yeah, we would like it to be very fast. Um, Jonah has uh, some strong yeah. opinions about that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It would be nice if they were now. But uh, but yeah, they, they 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 are they are coming and and uh, you know, they, they they're not they're not clueless about this about this being a great experience. They're working hard on this as far as. Okay. If you haven't. Um, Mentioned it. There's yes. there's a bunch of demos in the back for HDR2 that you can check out. Yes, and Tony, do you want to talk about the game work you guys are doing with games at all here? All yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, I, in my opinion, HDR is probably one of the kind of coolest things to come around in the display technology in a really long time. Um, I'm not sure which I find cooler, 4K or HDR. So we'll just we'll just say you need both. Um, but we've worked with a bunch of game developers to start integrations on, on the HDR side. Um, the nice thing is that it's it's pretty straightforward, um, particularly with most modern games. They already render in a high dynamic range way. They typically render to an off-screen surface, and the G-buffer precision is in 16-bit floating point per component. So there's plenty of precision there. So we just basically, generally, we just have to work with them to update, uh, I'll call it their tone mapper, to be HDR aware. Um, and then integrate some API calls so that the game can detect that there's a HDR capable display connected, put it in HDR mode, query it in terms of nits and brightness, do the right thing in their tone mapper in a way they go. So we've got um, about half a dozen, a little more than half a dozen games that we've already worked with to start integrations um, on HDR. Um, and it can make a really dramatic difference. And some of those games are back here as well, and you can check out you know, LDR, uh, low dynamic range versus high dynamic range kind of AB examples. It's, um, it's pretty awesome. Um, and the nice thing is it generally doesn't require a great deal of content reauthoring. Like I said, a lot of it, from an engine perspective, they're already doing 99% of the hard work. They just need to make some changes to the, that final tone map resolve pass and then have some awareness of an HDR display. So we have APIs for all of that that we provide to game developers as well, and that's part of GameWorks uh, as an SDK too. Cool. Thank you, Tony. Okay, so that's it. So I, I, uh, talk, I hope I gave you guys a good understanding of sort of the architecture what we were doing going to 16 FinFET, uh, you know, some of the work that, that, that we did and, and, and that, our, that our friends did, you know, to, to make a really awesomely fast memory interface, um, and then just the, you know, the whole you know, mentality of craftsmanship, you know, that, that, that went into this, this design to, you know, from the architecture to the design and implementation to the, to the, the board, the power supply, just everywhere, you know, the whole team just focused on that idea of just being great craftsmen, building a great product uh, for you guys to enjoy. Um, so that, that's what I have, so thank you everybody. Okay. <laughs>